Hi and welcome to part 16 of the DIY CNC machine build here on Willy's Garage. My CNC machine is starting to work ok and I figured out most of the settings as you can see in uh, some of my previous videos but there are a few faults that I want to address. First one is that my set axis is guided by non supported rails. This makes the set axis a little bit wobbly and I want to replace those with some supported rails like the one I have on my Y axis and on my X axis. The second fault is my spindle. I have a Chinese spindle. Uh, it's about 4 to 500 watts. It's too weak and it has a ER11 collet uh, which I think is too small and uh, the tools are too weak for my taste. So I want to change the spindle for something more powerful and uh, something that will fit my use or what I want to use my CNC machine for. As some of you already know from my Facebook page, link in the description if you want to check that out, I have bought a new Makita spindle. This is the RT0700C. It's a 230 volt 3.1 amperes 710 watt spindle with an RPM range of 10,000 to 30,000 revolutions per minute. So this is a much more powerful spindle and it has a bigger collet for bigger tools. So in this video I plan to design the mounts for the Makita spindle in Fusion 360 and later I plan to carve it out from acrylic material. That's at least the plan for this video. Let me start the design in uh, Fusion 360 and uh, then we're going to see how it all goes. Okay, 
What happened here was that the carved piece broke loose from the stock piece. This was not supposed to happen because of the tabs. I put the tabs in in Fusion 360 in the cam environment. The tabs are designed to hold the piece firmly to the stock piece while the milling process is going on. Lesson learned. When putting the tabs on the piece in Fusion 360, make them thicker than one millimeter. Let's continue. Yeah, there you have it, the mounts are finally finished. As you saw, I had a couple of uh, problems during the process. First off, the piece broke loose from the stock piece, and I had to abort the milling process. This resulted in some beauty blemishes, like the ones you see here, but it's no biggie. Then I had to take each mount and find a new zero point, so I could carve the 65mm hole in the middle. This was no problem, but it was a lot of hassle. I also had to carve the slot here for the fastening of the spindle manually using the universal decode sender. 4 cm that way, down half a millimeter, 4 cm this way, down half a millimeter, 4 cm that way, all the way through the piece. Let's see if they fit the Makita spindle. Yeah. Like you see, they fit like a charm. The spindle is going to be mounted like this with the set axis plate down here, if you know what I mean, like this. And as you can see on the CAD drawing down there, I have to drill holes here, here and here. And I have to drill a hole through here for the tightening of the spindle. Again, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or requests, please let me know in the comments below. Please like or dislike this video. Subscribe to my channel or go to my Facebook page or my webpage to see more. Links in the description. Bye!